one of my favorite Puerto Rican dishes that you've probably never heard of. I'm Cesar, this is Criollo Kitchen, and today I'm making guanimes. Guanimes are a corn and coconut dumpling wrapped in banana leaves, boiled, and usually served alone or as a side. I'm gonna show you how to make them. So one of my favorite ingredients in the world is banana leaves. Uh, the irony being you don't actually eat these, but they are used to flavor things, to cook things inside of. You can find this in most Southeast Asian supermarkets, Latin American supermarkets, and they come frozen in a pack, folded up. So you'll thaw it in the fridge overnight and they're pliable. And before you can use them, you need to make them even more pliable and sanitize them. So that's why I have my flame going and I'm just gonna pass my banana leaf over the flame and you can see how it's starting to become like shiny and softer. And this happens really quick. If you don't have a gas flame, uh, you could technically do it over uh, an electric stove. You just have to be a little more careful because it can burn. Another thing you can do is steam it. If you have a steam basket, you can just fold them up, put them in the steam basket and it'll pretty much do the same thing. But you can see how this is so much greener and more vibrant than this one that I haven't flamed yet. I always have banana leaves in my freezer. I love wrapping things in them. You can wrap up a whole fish and steam it. You can put it over a pot of rice uh, as it steams and it'll infuse it with that flavor. And for things like this, like guanimes or, or pasteles, I can't compare it to anything. Um, it does have a really beautiful, almost floral scent. Imparts flavor into whatever you're cooking. It's just this very subtle floral. I don't even know if floral is the word, to be honest. Just gotta experience it. You, if you see a pack of banana leaves, just buy it. You can wrap some fish in it. You can wrap a piece of meat in it, pop it in the oven, steam it. You'll see banana leaves used a lot in Caribbean food, in Southeast Asian food. Uh, some African cuisines also use this. Our leaves are all pliable and sanitized. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna cut these into manageable pieces. I'm going around, just make squares. Each one's gonna be totally different because as you can see, the, the leaf is curved. So what I do is I just snap it at this seam and then you just rip it off. You can't do the opposite because this won't rip. You have to cut it. All right, our leaves are cut up, portioned out. Now we're gonna make the dough for our guanimes. So in our pot, I'm gonna add our coconut milk, our brown sugar, and a good pinch of salt. Give it a whisk. So we just wanna bring this up to a simmer before adding our cornmeal. So guanimas are pretty interesting. This is a, a pre-Hispanic dish from Puerto Rico and similar versions can be found throughout the Caribbean. I would probably compare it in flavor to a tamale, like Mexican tamales because of the, the corn. In Puerto Rico, typically this is served with something stewed, like stewed codfish or could even be like beef stew or chicken stew. But the idea being that this is a little sweet and it'll complement something stewed and saucy really well. Aside from the cornmeal version of guanimas, you could also find this made with all-purpose flour. Some people do it like a dumpling. And there are also versions made out of plantains too. Really old recipes call for anise seeds and molasses. Some people like making them sweeter. Some people like making them a little saltier. I like them pretty sweet. So I didn't really grow up eating these. Um, it's something I learned about later in life and, and had later in life. And when I would ask my family, like, how can we never have this? And my grandmother would be like, oh, I had that when I was a little kid. Like no one makes that anymore. But this is really making a comeback uh, with young Puerto Rican chefs. So I'm really happy to see that happening. And it's so easy. It's a shame to let something like this die. Like you, we have to keep these, these recipes alive. So I'm slowly gonna start going in with the cornmeal. A little bit at a time, I don't really want it to be lumpy. All right, we thickened up. I'm gonna kill the heat. And I'm gonna switch from a whisk to a spoon. So at this point, I'm gonna go in with some fresh corn off the cob. You can also use canned corn, you can use frozen corn, or you can use no corn. Whole corn is not usually in this, but I think it's delicious. And I'm gonna go in with a whole stick of butter. And we're gonna stir this in. So our butter is melted. Everything is mixed in. 
it's time to start assembling. So one thing to keep in mind, there are two sides to the leaf. You have a flat side and you have a ridged side. Ridge side goes out, faces out. The flat side is what you're building on. So get a good amount, plop it in the middle. Very easy. We're just gonna roll it like a sausage. Shape it with your fingers a little bit. See that? Fold over. Now, you're gonna cut two pieces of string. You're gonna take one end, twist. You're gonna take your string. Tie it tightly. Same thing with the other one side. Tie tightly. That's it. One of my favorite books of Puerto Rican cuisine is called Cocina Criolla. And this is like one of the oldest Puerto Rican cookbooks and where I got the name for this series, Criollo Kitchen. And it's basically a bunch of old recipes from like the 1930s, 1940s. There are recipes for this and for the plantain variation. It's something that's like in every Puerto Rican's home. It's kind of like the joy of cooking for Puerto Ricans. Um, the English version of the book is called Puerto Rican Cookery and I highly recommend it. Um, I saw it at Barnes & Noble not that long ago, so it's still around, it's still in print. And that's how I learned about these. And then I did some more research and watched videos about it. So yeah, I mean, I mean, food from the Caribbean, Latin Caribbean, Latin America as a whole is just really complex and there's still so much to learn, so much for me to learn and happy to share what I do know with you guys. Um, if there are any other things that you want me to explore in Criollo Kitchen, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to give it a shot. So I'm gonna keep working on these, but here I have some boiling water. I'm just gonna hit it with a little salt and we're gonna drop these in. And this will go for about 30, 45 minutes. My guanimas are ready. It's been about 45 minutes. So I'm just gonna fish them out and I'm gonna let them rest for a few minutes before I cut into them. So resting them is gonna do a few things. They're gonna firm up a little more and they're gonna be easier to unwrap. You can eat this alone. I'm gonna serve it alongside a little bacalao guisao, which is stewed codfish. And this is gonna be the most common way it's served. All right, let's give it a taste. Get a little bit of the guanime. The texture is so nice. You can see the bits of corn in there. A little piece of our fish. The guanime is sweet. The bacalao has a really nice saltiness. This is really simple food, really humble food but it's so delicious. I think you're really gonna like it. Please give it a try. If you like this video, check out my pastelon video.